I'm about to try and do something that I've always dreamt of, but never thought would be possible. Levitate. I want to know if I can defy gravity using the power of science. Mastering levitation could transform our world, benefiting everything from the environment we live in to medicine. This technology could change your life. And as someone who loves science... It feels like I'm looking at magic. I want to know how close we are. Ta -da! So I've got in touch with YouTube creators across the world... What's that? Liquid nitrogen superconductor. And together, oh, we're going to try and find the cutting-edge science and technology... I'm super curious to know how all this works. This is cool. ..that will tell us if it's possible to beat gravity. Take that, Earth. Right, I'm going to do it. There's no agreed definition of levitation. It basically means mysteriously floating in the air. So to set some rules, I'm meeting one of the internet's most brilliant inventors. Colin? Ah, oh, Rick. Hello, mate. How are you? Good. Welcome to the shed. What have we got in here? Well, you know... I'm this is exciting. Of course it is. It's the Colin first shed. Yeah. These are my magnet shoes. Yes. That's a pure win. Yeah. Can't not be happy with that. Flame throwing guitar. Of course. <laughs> if you're going to rock and roll, you've got to have a flame throwing guitar. I'm here to actually talk to you about levitation. Personal question, but have you ever levitated? No, not levitated. I suppose the closest. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Ta da! Yes. So this is my hover bike, which I can't believe actually worked, but it did. This thing is basically a death trap. It's just plotting to take your legs off. So the hover bike is very cool, no doubt. But for me, anyway, this is flying more than levitating. Yeah, definitely. You don't look at a helicopter and go, a helicopter's levitating. No. Yeah. I think we need to get rid of moving parts, probably. One that I would want to rule out is sort of weightlessness in space. Yeah. Well, everyone can levitate in space, can't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Any kind of magnetic levitation, like the maglev trains, That's that good. feels good to me. Yeah. So if we want you to levitate... Well, we need some rules, don't we? Yeah. What we're looking for is raised up, off the ground, yeah. without any moving parts, without any mechanical support. That's what we're after. Can we do it? I don't know, really. We're going to find out, though, aren't we? All right, Rick. We're going to have a blooming good go, mate. OK, Rick, so you want to levitate. Well, unfortunately, that's not easy, or we'd probably all be doing it. But there's actually some really amazing research about levitation using sound. Sound can actually exert a force on objects. It can move things. Check it out. This contraption is called a Clodney plate. And I've hooked it up to a frequency generator. When I turn up the volume, the plate will start to vibrate. Check out what happens when I sprinkle some salt onto the plate. So cool. The vibration of the sound waves moves the salt into patterns. Moving stuff with sound waves, we've got to give this a go. Let's try a bit of music. Go on. The louder the music, the more powerful the sound waves, and the more our paint jumps. Well, it looks pretty. Not levitation. No, not quite levitation, but there is power there. I mean, I think if we were to try and levitate you by sound, we'd need a massive speaker. All right, a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more. Watch what happens when I change the frequency.
sound is a vibration. Whether you're clapping or you're shouting, that vibration carries a sound wave through the air to your eardrums, and that's what you're hearing. In this case, the sound waves are moving through the metal and they're vibrating the salt. So on the plate where the salt is jumping around, that's where you're getting strong vibrations from the sound waves. But in these parts where the salt is really calm, that's the basis of levitation with sound. The areas where the salt gathers are actually where the sound waves are cancelling each other out, known as nodes. And controlling those is the key to sonic levitation. A team of world-leading scientists are pushing that idea to its limits. And I want to find out if their technology can help me levitate. Oh, my God. I mean... Pretty cool. It's freaky, is what it is. They're building the sonic levitation machines of the future. It's fixed in there. You know, it's, it's pretty robust. And we can move things around in it. So and these like are a... just like tiny little loudspeakers? Yes. Yeah. Every one of them produces sound waves. Some coming from the bottom, some coming from the top. They meet in the middle and they interfere. You get a quiet region, a loud region, quiet region, a loud region. We call the quiet regions nodes. So the balls are sitting in the nodes. The same nodes that we saw the salt build up at on the Cladney plate. We can actually visualise that. So here's our dry ice. You can see it follows the patterns. They're almost like you're on a bed of sound. It feels like I'm looking at magic. The thing that makes it feel spookiest, I think, is that it's silent. And we're talking about sound waves, but I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's ultrasound, so beyond the audible range. Is it loud? Incredibly loud as ultrasonic waves go. It's of the order of 160 decibels. Oh, so that's like a jet engine. Yep. Bruce's team have already built machines that can levitate liquid. Oh, now it's having a bit of fun with the polystyrene ball and even move objects around in precise patterns. People will call these things acoustic tweezers, actually. So this is amazing, but my ambition is to levitate something a bit bigger. Clearly keen to impress, Bruce has built his biggest ever levitator just for us. Oh, yeah, so now we're talking. Yeah, here we have the much bigger levitator. We're hoping to break a world record with this. I would love to break a world record today, but not going okay. to lie. <laughs> and where's the other half? Is this working in a different way? So this is an acoustic vortex. So we fire these loudspeakers in a sequence, so we create a spiral of sound. And then the object gets caught in the sort of like the yeah, eye of the, the storm. In the eye of the storm, exactly. So this is pretty much on the world record. Oh. Ah. oh! Not easy, this levitation business, is it? Hello. Don't leave me hanging. That's it. We've equaled the world record. I now want to break the world record. OK, so here we have the world record beater, potentially. OK, so I'm going to make this official by yeah. using this little... Um, What's this called, a micrometer? Yeah, or a vernier caliper. Yeah, let's go micrometer. <laughs> so that'll break the world record. Absolutely, by a clear margin of two minutes. Ooh. So, breathe. Please. 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 Come on. I think that is yes. the world yes. record. That is the world record. Yes! <laughs> Largest objects. I've never broken a world record before. Oh, I love it. Now, Rick, you may have broken a world record, and congratulations on that, but remember, we said levitation with no mechanical assistance. And little tiny speakers, I think that's mechanical assistance. So, keep trying. Yeah, all right, Colin, fair point. But this is still a technology with amazing potential. Right now, it might just look like a few floating balls, but before long, this technology could change your life, or maybe even save it. 
imagine if your doctor could move things around in your body without surgery and without scalpels. Say, delivering a capsule of medicine to a specific spot, breaking up kidney stones, maybe even removing tumours. All of this without opening you up. It sounds like science fiction, but by programming sound waves in order to move objects with utmost precision, this could become a feasible reality. Or how about a factory production line where component parts can be moved around seamlessly on a bed of sound, so there's no manipulation, no hands and no tools? A real-life sonic screwdriver could be closer than you think. A future of sonic surgeries and screwdrivers sounds great, but that technology won't levitate me anytime soon. I think it's time to tackle the fundamental force that's keeping me grounded – gravity. Well, Rick, if you want to get to grips with gravity, you're going to need to start by thinking big. And I mean cosmically big. Imagine that this piece of black cloth is the universe, the very fabric of space-time. There are no planets, no stars, nothing at all. And because of that, there's no gravity. Because the most important thing about gravity is that it's caused by mass. So let's introduce some mass into our scene. A star, let's call it the sun. So if we put it in space-time, we actually create a well around the sun. And then if we introduce a little blue planet Earth, we can watch what happens. So only 93 million miles away, we're close enough to the enormous mass of the sun that we actually get pulled in by its gravity into this well, and we start to orbit the sun as does anything else. So the Earth is pulled towards the Sun, but everything else on Earth, you, me, this whole model of space-time, is subject to the Earth's own gravitational pull. And that's why you're stuck to the ground, Rick. But all is not lost. Despite what you might think, gravity is actually the weakest of the fundamental forces. If I drop this little ball, it falls to the Earth under its gravitational pull. But I can actually overcome gravity with this tiny little magnet. So the force that is holding this magnet to the iron ball is electromagnetism. And it's 10 to the power 40 times stronger than gravity. OK, now we're getting somewhere. I've seen magnets in action with Colin's magnetic shoes. So could magnets be the answer to getting me up in the air? OK, Rick, so these sets of magnets both have a north and a south pole, and opposite poles attract and same poles repel. It's that repulsion that we want for levitation. So if I take a look at this set of magnets inside of this test tube, on the bottom is a set of magnets with the north pole down. Now, if I put them over this magnet with the north pole up, levitation. But there's a problem. As soon as I remove my finger, the magnets fly out. Magnets are constantly trying to flip over so that the opposite poles meet. So how can we make magnetic levitation more stable? And more importantly, how can we do it on a large scale? There's a guy here in California we want to talk to because he's thinking big. He wants to levitate buildings. Hi, guys. I'm super curious to know how all this works, but I really want to see it in action. Oh, wow. Oh, man, that is so cool. There's a lot of resistance there. Yeah, and you can actually see it bounce in midair. Oh, wow. You oh, should be able to try. Oh, no. <laughs> OK, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Oh, you got it. OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it turns, so that's. I promise you I'm not trying to go that close to the edge. That is just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, ah! yeah, that was good. <laughs> <sighs> so 
So how did the idea for this come about? As an architect, I've been working for most of my adult life on better ways to build for natural disasters. Oh, everyone's familiar with big earthquakes here in the Bay Area. If you want to separate a house or a structure from the earth for the duration of an earthquake, what about an electromagnetic field? Mm -hmm. And so the idea was, if you can levitate a 50,000 kilogram train, why not a house? Well, when you start to dive into the technology, you realize that the magnetic levitation trains need to be moving and sometimes 100 miles an hour before they actually levitate. So how do you levitate a stationary object? So I had the idea, what if that train went in a circle, right? And then what if that train was the same length as the track? I see. The entire train is your system. It's just a, a thing moving in a circle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so we take that concept and we shrink it down and we get a hover engine. And here you can see four of them. Each oh. one of these is an individual train. Okay, so I think I have a good handle on how this technology works. I'm gonna show you a quick demo with a copper tube. So if I take a piece of candy and I drop it through the tube, it falls through pretty quickly. But if instead I use a magnet, it takes much longer for the magnet to fall through the tube. Now the reason why is that the magnet has a magnetic field. And when that magnetic field moves through the tube, it creates another opposing magnetic field that pushes up. It repels the magnet and keeps it from falling as fast which is similar to what's going on in the technology behind me. There's moving magnets in the bottom of the white box, and those create another magnetic field in the copper sheet on the bottom, which pushes up on the box. So, how about an earthquake? Earthquake. Ready? Yeah. That's really cool. So it turns out, if you want to levitate a 50,000 kilogram house for let's say 90 seconds, or the duration of an earthquake like we have here in California, the amount of energy required is stored in only five car batteries. The challenge is getting it out very, very quickly. It's cool tech, but the engine in that hover box means it relies on moving parts, so that rules it out for us. But I do want to know where else this could lead. When it comes to the future of magnetic levitation, the possibilities are almost limitless. We can already buy levitating light bulbs, phone chargers, record players, but in the near future, we could even have floating joysticks for fighter pilots where the knobs and buttons hover in midair. But if we look even further ahead, the possibilities for this tech get really bold. Take the Hyperloop, the pet project of billionaire entrepreneurs and fringe scientists. Forget the maglev train, they want to use magnetic levitation to transport capsules of people through depressurized tubes at speeds of up to 700 miles an hour. This would be the world's most efficient transport system if they can get it to work. Hyperloop travel is a way off. But Colin thinks magnets could still be the key to levitating me. Hey man, how's it going? It's all good. You need to get back here. I've got a more practical experiment to show you, which is levitation. Genuine levitation? Genuine levitation. I'm there. See you in a bit. All right. Yeah. Colin. What you got for me? Oh, mate, perfect timing. What's that? Liquid nitrogen, superconductor. I'm cooling it down. It's got to be as cold as we can possibly get it. So how cold are we talking, then? Proper cold. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. So I've got an orange here. OK. At around minus 200 degrees Celsius, the liquid nitrogen freezes the orange in seconds. Right, here's a hammer. Oh, very good. Thought you'd like this bit. Go for it, chap. Oh! <laughs> That's really good. Right, back in you go. So are these super strong magnets? Yeah, the old near medium ones. Don't get your uh, keys or your phone or anything next to it. Beautiful. You'll get rid of your WhatsApp history in a second. <laughs> oh, hang on, let me get my phone. <laughs> <laughs> right, are we ready? Yeah. It's going to levitate, Rick, which is what we're all about, aren't we? Come on now. So, if we put it here, look. Look at that. Oh, mate. 
This ceramic disc is a superconductor, and it demonstrates a strange scientific principle that, to be honest, is not fully understood. Oh, yes, please. When a superconductor is placed above a strong magnet, it locks into the magnetic field and levitates. And I just love how it just that bobs around. Really and then, look, cool. it starts to warm up, starts to warm up, and then it's like it's fed up with levitating there. But for a moment there. I oh, know. So we get stable magnetic levitation without the moving parts that ruled out the hover box. So hang on, I want to see it go all the way around the track. Yeah, we need to keep it colder for longer. So I've got a little plan. We've got this little thing here, look. And then we're going to put our superconductor in here to keep it cool. Then hopefully that should give us a bit more than a few seconds. Right then, Mr. Superconductor. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's quite, I mean, it's quite chilly. I'll give it that. Is it working? Oh! Look at that. And it's upside, and upside down. down. Oh, man. That is so cool. Oh, come on. That's weird. What? This is exactly what we're after. This is levitation. Yeah. No moving parts, no mechanical trickery. So if we make it's you a bit it. smaller, because, you know, you are a giant... Yeah. ..of all like... the people to try and get to <laughs> levitate... I know, I know. <laughs> if we could get you in there... The problem is just scaling up, isn't it? OK, well, while you folk figure out how to upsize that track, I want to talk about superconductors. Clearly, they're your best bet to actually get off the ground, but they're also one of the coolest materials on the planet. What's so unique about these is they have zero electrical resistance. This means that an electric current can move through a superconductor without slowing down and barely leaking any energy away, meaning it could go pretty much forever. There's only one problem. The vast majority of superconductors only really work at a temperature of around minus 200 degrees Celsius. So scientists are on a multi-million pound quest in order to build a superconductor that would work at room temperatures. And if, or rather when, that happens, we could have pretty much levitating everything. Desks, cars, maybe even skateboards. Well, guess what? The future might be closer than you think. Colin's got wind of a levitating hoverboard that works in just the same way as our little boat, but has 32 individual superconductors inside. That should make it over 200 times stronger than our mini version. It's bumpy. You feel the bumps. With the help of 240 litres of liquid nitrogen and a team of technicians to scale things up, it might just be powerful enough to levitate me. But if I'm going to ride a hoverboard, I'll need to learn on something a bit easier first. Time to call in an expert. I have never skateboarded, I've never snowboarded, but I really, really want to try and get on this hoverboard and levitate. I think everyone wants to levitate on this hoverboard. Of course they do. <laughs> Any chance? I reckon so. I think we can get you there. Great, great. A hundred percent is all about the balance. A lot of it's to do with your foot positioning on the okay. board. It's a nice wide nice stance. Nice wide stance always yeah. helps. Yeah. And you want to keep your shoulders nice and straight. And then what we're doing with my hands, just sort of... <laughs> your hands can do whatever you <laughs> want to okay, do. Good, That's good, where okay, the style good. comes in. Yeah. I imagine what my hands are going to be doing is uh, being alert to catch my fall. Exactly <laughs> that. Meanwhile, sorting out a track for me to levitate above is Colin's job. Now, remember outside the shed, we had a massive magnetic track? Well, we have took that to the next level. We have set up a giant magnetic track. Now, this is a section, and this is like a row of super powerful magnets, like super powerful ones. To demonstrate how powerful this is, is a little washer, just a normal washer. If I put this in my hand and then just hover it, over the track, as I bring it down, it will stand it up. And what's that? That's about four inches away from the track, and I'm feeling the force of it pulling. 
Now, if this washer was a thick piece of metal and put my hand in there, it would literally just crush it. And we've had to be careful when we put this track together because if the two bits flip together and somebody's in between them, they're going to die. So we do not want that to happen. So, Rick, get better at skateboarding. Don't hurt yourself. Whoa! Colin, you've delivered. <laughs> Biggest magnetic track I could get you. I asked you to make it big. You've made it big. <laughs> Pressure's on you now, boy. There's a bit, isn't it? So, am I going to be standing on some sort of superconductor there? Yes, yes, you are. You're going to be st ah. you're standing, you are going to be levitating. I've got you a hoverboard. I can't believe it. An actual hoverboard? Yes. It's a hoverboard. This was developed by Lexus. This is like the real deal. Oliver has designed it. Hello, Oliver. Hello. Yeah, there are two packs of superconductors. Yeah. And then we have two chambers where we fill in the liquid nitrogen. Right. Should we fill her up? Well, I like all this. Oh, this is good, isn't it? It's like being in an 80s music video. What temperature will that cool the superconductors down to? We will minus 200 centigrade. Oh, that's cold. I don't remember Marty McFly having to do this. <laughs> At this freezing temperature, the superconductors will be able to lock into the magnetic field of the track. In theory, they should be strong enough to levitate all 100 kilos of me. Look at that. Just hovering. Genuine levitation. Right. Come on! I'm going to do it. I feel quite nervous. <sighs> OK. Right okay. then, Rick. So... Remember our skate lesson? You've got I it. Don't, I've dreamt about this. Was I there in the dream as well? No, you weren't, Colin. It was just me <laughs> and I was levitating. <laughs> Here we go. OK. Let, let, let go, maybe. I'm not, I'm not holding you. You're, old, you? you're holding me. I'm just stood here. I think I'm levitating. I'm, I'm levitating. <laughs> Colin, I'm levitating. <laughs> I'm levitating. Yes. Oh my god, amazing! Oh my god, I'm levitating. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This feels amazing. Yep, you're not touching the floor. Give me a little push and see what happens. He goes. Off he goes. You got it? That's sort of, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Are we getting to the end of the ramp? Nearly. Nearly. Okay, stop me, stop me, stop me, stop me. <laughs> Whew. Yes, please. Right, Colin, Colin Rick, I've got to have a shot on you, this you, chap. You've got to have a go. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes? You're getting to the end. You're getting to the end. You're getting to the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. Nice. Nice. Time to see what a professional can do. Hoverboard. Welcome to the future. Clearly, Rianne's a natural. Let's see how she handles Colin's jump. Come on, go on, yeah. come on. <laughs> yes. Woo! Oh, yes. That is cool. Oh, here goes nothing. I can't believe it. Rick wanted to defy gravity, and he has. There we go. Whoa! There we go. Yes. <laughs> Take that, Earth. <laughs> Amazing. You did it, Rick. Congratulations. You worked with the laws of physics, and you were able to levitate. Whoo, here we you go. You got this. All right. <laughs> I really wish I was there to celebrate with you. Oh, my gosh. There we oh. go. Oh, hello. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth. Yes. And hey, maybe in the future it will be you riding a hoverboard around town. Pretty there good. We there we are. 
I feel like I've ticked something off a bucket list I haven't even written yet. This is back to the future. This is like dreams come true. I'm doing it. I'm levitating. We did it. Through science, we beat gravity. I've had a very good day. Pleased to hear that, Colin. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed The Edge of Science. To see more original shows, please click on the bottom right of the screen.